The Great War ended in surrender for the German Empire with the Treaty of Versailles, and many accredit the severity of the terms of the treaty to the rise in German nationalism and the eventual rise of the National Socialist Party within Germany, which later led to the Second World War. But today I ask the question, what if that never happened? What if the Weltkrieg ended in German victory rather than surrender? We're going to find that out in today's video using the extended timeline mod for Europa Universalis 4. If this video gets at least 500 likes, I will play the World War II scenario in extended timeline starting as Germany as well. And not only that, but I will also go on to destroy the Soviets just as it was intended before. So if you want to see that, make sure we get to 500 likes on this video. So uh, you may be wondering how I got here, <laughs> but uh, yes, we are Germany. We are at war with a very large Russia, a very large France, and a very large Great Britain. Our ally here is Austria, and we have 256,000 men in the field right now. It may look pretty dire, but you need to remember that German ideas are quite strong. The numbers are definitely not in our favor. I think we should be able to overcome this. Let's start off with a couple of these guys, because we have some options here. Obviously, we want discipline. I think we'll go with artillery combat ability. And now the last one, do we want infantry combat ability or siege ability. I think we'll go with infantry combat ability. Battles is going to be what's going to win us this. We have an idea group unlocked. Let's try out freedom ideas. That sounds like a German thing, yeah? We have the vanilla mission tree, so let's just click a couple of these things. For these guys here, we are definitely, definitely going to be needing some combat stats. And then the other ones, we just want to be as cheap as possible while still getting a little bit of something out of it. Our economy is absolutely in the toilet. I'm going to come over here and immediately disband the Navy. Except for these guys, I will have them protecting trade in Lebec. As for our armies, we have a giant cavalry stack here a giant infantry stack here we have very little artillery in our armies we got 20,000 artillery here so as far as forts goes we have a couple of level fours and a level eight here this is all level two except for Konigsberg is a level eight capital is in Berlin which is a level seven fort so that's pretty solid fighting back the Ruskies is probably going to be our primary goal here because the French are going to absolutely kick our butts look at that morale for France goodness gracious luckily for us Russia has garbage morale and garbage discipline we do not have militarization which is unfortunate but it's not the end of the world so if we click this button, Wilhelm will lose a mill power. We will lose some mill mana. And until the death of Wilhelm, we get morale and discipline. So I'm going to click that button. Our force limit does not really allow a lot more men, but I really think that we don't need this many cavalry. So we're going to get rid of basically all of them and replace them all with these French 75 here. And now we're just going to take some time to figure out our army composition before we even unpause here. For the combat with the 40, we can make some templates here. Something along the lines of this. Right off the rip, we are going to put on the local defensiveness edict on basically any state that we think that we might get siege down in. And I think we can unpause. We're probably going to go on speed three for now. We have a German New Guinea and we have some events right here at the very beginning. Very cool. Luckily, we have some professionalism, so we can click this button a few times. Oh my gosh. They have 11 day siege ticks. Okay. Um, Belgium. That doesn't sound good. Ruskies have really good siege ticks as well. Hopefully Austria can at least try to push these guys back. We have Eric Ludendorff and Eric von Falkenhayn. Neither are that good, but we're going to do what we can with them. Make the best of our situation here. First battle of the war. Let's do it. And they won the siege. You got to be freaking joking me. Either way, we should be able to absolutely clap these guys as long as the French don't come out of the fog of war and jump on me. There we go. Take that back ASAP. So what I'd like is to have at least two artillery stacks, two major stacks of artillery that we can depend on. And then the rest will just be reinforcements. This stack can handle over here with Eric Ludendorff on the French front. And then it looks like Austria is keeping Russia preoccupied for now, which is really good for us. Yes, all the artillery. Bring it in. I am dreading fighting the French over here. It is going to be an absolute massacre for us. We have our second combat stack over here. This will be the Russian front. The fact that we edge Russia out so much in the morale and discipline front makes me feel quite a bit better about this part of the war. Now, these guys are probably going to be set to go over to the French front then. We have much less cannons over here, so we're going to need to get more men over there. I really don't think we need the cav. So I'm just going to get rid of these cav and we're going to swap out cannons instead. And if we need to, we can go with mercs as well. That's definitely an option for us. So here we go. 95,000 men in reserve. I think we'll send them mostly over to France here. It looks like the Austrians are going to help us over here on the Russian front. It would be very risky for us to head in and try to make some ad forward advances into France. So I think what we're going to do is we are going to scorch some forts over here in the hopes of possibly getting France to take a bad fight into our lands. Preserving our manpower early on is going to be very, very important for our successes going forward. I will gladly make some forward advances into Russia, though. Oh my gosh, yeah, these numbers are absolutely terrible. They have 400,000 cavalry. Russia alone has 115,000 cavalry. Luckily, our artillery is slowly growing up in number. You guys have to remember, we are not the war leader here. We are a secondary non-co-belligerent in this war, so we're just going to have to ride it out. We actually have no say in the peace deal either, which is uh, kind of whack, but you know, it is what it is. It, it makes sense. Austria was indeed the one who started the war, so all quiet on the Western 
Eastern Front. Eastern Front as well. We're winning some sieges over here in Plock. So hopefully we can push through that pretty quickly. Ruskies are sieging down Austria over here and they are just letting it happen. Austria has got some armies. I don't know where. There's half their army just chilling over here. Yeah, they got one army in Bavaria standing still here in Regensburg and then one up here in uh, Czechia. So, yep, being useful as per usual. Numbers are going down. It's mostly just because we do not have the war goal, which is the capital of Serbia. The longer this goes on, the more that we're able to occupy in Russia, the higher we're able to get their war exhaustion, the more likely they will be to peace out, which will be huge for war score. Not to mention the amount of men that they're contributing to the war, which is like a third of the entire forces of the conflict. All right, I'm getting impatient. I think we're going to try this out and hopefully it does not go as poorly as I think it might. France has just not put forward any men. If we can at least siege down a couple of forts over here, it might make a big difference for us in the war. Yeah, the French must be scared. Letting us get wall breaches over here. Going well so far. We've won the siege of Verdun. Very good, very good. I have nothing to even say about this over here. You guys are on your own. I cannot be bothered to even think about trying to go down and fight South Africa and all these guys down in Africa. We don't have to talk about this one. Bit of a stain on their reputation, I think. All right, looks like the Russians are starting to react ever so slightly. We're winning some sieges over here in France. Oh no, Wilhelm died. Oh my gosh. Our son has died and we are 56 years old. Uh, that is bad news indeed. Yikes. That's, uh, yeah, that could be pretty bad for us. We'll see how things go with that. Look at this guy, this Philippe Lambert guy standing here with a 70, 36, 20 stack. What are you doing? I mean, I'm not going to attack them. That would be very foolish, but uh, I, I don't know why you guys would be standing there. They've taken back Plock. No. All right, we're going to try reloading because the AI is absolutely derping out and they will not move their troops. Yeah, I don't know. These guys are just standing a hundred and some thousand men. All right, these guys are now moving. See if maybe we can wipe out these armies here on Paris. Yes, we can. Now we're going to stand here for a few weeks, hopefully siege down Paris. We might want to actually try to fight them. Would probably be smart for us. The more of their men we destroy in battle, the better. Oh my gosh, what an absolute mess. <laughs> Okay, good, good, good. This is exactly what we need. Paris has been won. Paris has been won. All is well. So losses are super heavy on there. And France has lost 49. Oh my gosh. The Russians have lost 300,000 already. That is kind of nuts. 250 some thousand men lost to attrition. The more men they lose, the more war exhaustion Russia is going to be getting as well, which is going to be all the better for us. That's a, that's a bonk right there. The more men we take out, the better. I'm even willing to force march around to make sure that I can catch them. I'll come up here and fight them in the grasslands. They have superior men. We have a superior general and we have better combat ability. These guys are not even reinforced. So it looks like this should be a win for us. They don't have artillery either. So, oh my gosh, what a massacre. 20,000 cavalry, bro. They never stood a chance. French are slowly picking away at their little sieges down here. Gotta be mindful of that. There's another stack over here and Wilhelm has died. Oh my gosh. A new Kaiser has risen. Joachim the first von Plauen. Very cool. Safe to say that the von Hohenzollern dynasty will be remembered. 533 is not bad at all. I can live with this. And the Ruskies are getting absolutely routed. They have like one third of the manpower in the field that they did before. And I'm going to continue to apply pressure to them and wipe out as many of their regiments as I possibly can. This is a French stack with no general over here in farmlands, I believe. So uh, should be an easy clap. Yes, more. Destroy them all. Good, good defender of the faith. That would give us a little bit of extra morale. Looks like Austria is just bugged. So, uh, you know, AI gonna AI. I suppose we're just in it on our own. More casualties of war. Anytime we see this grasslands terrain and I see an army standing there, I'm pushing for it. We need to make sure we are just absolutely massacring the Russians. And boy, are they taking some losses over here. Oh my gosh, man. Shout out my Belgian boys. You did not deserve what you got in the First World War. We actually have more men in the field by a long shot than the Russians do. We actually have more men in the field than the French do now as well. Oh my goodness gracious. We have an heir and he is a 556 Friedrich, you absolute Chad. Friedrich von Plauen. Let me just say for a second how good of a thing it is that the US is not in this war as well. This could go so much worse if they had the US in there. Could you imagine? Luxembourg is pieced out. The first piece of the war. Belgium has pieced out and uh, they actually gave us a bunch of land over here as well as some money, which is great for us. Who said Wallonia was French? Wallonia is indeed German, don't you know? Zero Jenkins. And we need to march in our 50,000 men to make sure we get some armies in there. Casualties we're inflicting are absolutely massive. Look at that. 100 to 1400. Russia has pieced out a white piece on the Russian front. Let's go, dude. Now they moved their armies. Both of them are in Bavaria now instead of one being in Czechia. Their morale is going down. Oh my gosh, they're losing double the men we are. 60 to what? 60 to 1500? What in the world? We must have rolled really good. A nine to a one. Let's go, dude. Oh my gosh, these losses. <laughs> Our cavalry got absolutely gutted, but look at these numbers, dude. The numbers, Mason, what do they mean? 
That is crazy. That is actually insane. Once we siege back the wieners, we will should be able to uh, get enthusiasm up to the point where we might be able to actually even fish for a good peace deal for ourselves. And there we go. The First World War ends. Quarter of a million losses on our side and almost a million on their side. So Austria will cede KOTOR. So Austria surrendered. You absolute cowards. You absolute cowards. You suck. Austria, you suck, dude. Either way, apparently we lost. But uh, I don't feel so bad about this because Austria surrendered. We did not lose anything in this war. Um, clearly, clearly Germany came out ahead. Just getting rid of the artillery puts us in the green and then uh, turning our army maintenance down a bit. We might want to get rid of some more of our armies, but right now I think we're okay. But yes, guys, hope you guys enjoyed that little video. If you guys did, make sure you let me know, leave a like on the video, because as I said, if I get at least 500 likes on this video, I will do the World War II situation as uh, the uh, National Socialists here in Germany. Uh, if that sounds like something you'd like to see, make sure you leave a like on the video. As far as the Great War, this timeline definitely went a lot better for us. Some separatists for the Commonwealth popping up over here in Russia. Russia. Russia's manpower pool is absolutely destroyed. Take a look at that. Five war exhaustion for them. The Russians have 3.2, but somebody's so discontent in their nation as well. So that's pretty good for us. If you haven't already, I recommend you subscribe to my channel here because there's plenty of content you're missing out on if you are not subscribed and there's plenty more to come. If you have suggestions, make sure you leave them in the comments below. And I do stream multiple days a week over at twitch.tv slash Chewy So if you want to follow me over there, I definitely recommend that as well. But the Imperial German Reich lives on to see another day and the Weltkrieg is over. Not necessarily in favor of us, but definitely better in our timeline. Plus, we get to welcome some new people to our country. I don't necessarily know how I feel about it, but, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys will tell me about how you feel about it in the comments below. Either way, lads, that's all I've got for you for today. And until next time, stay cool.